It's now two years since 16-year-old Queen's College student Nisa Lalita Gopal was murdered and there are still many unanswered questions relating to that case. Her headless body was discovered on Saturday, October 26, 2010 in a suitcase near the Emerald Tower Resort at Madawini off the Suicide Linden Highway. The black suitcase was dumped into the Madawini Creek. The Caribbean American Domestic Violence Awareness Association, CADVA, in attempting to undertake their own research, found that Gopal may have predicted her own death based on a number of findings. Chief Operations Officer of the U.S.-based non-governmental organization, Diane Madre, said that there are many loose ends to the case which relatives are hoping to have some closure on. Madre visited the home where Nisa and her family lived before the tragic incident. A picture that Nisa drew just before her death caught the attention of the CADVA executive who took the drawing to the United States for study. If you see this drawing, you probably might ask, um, was Nisa Gopal, um, if she indeed drew that picture, had she um, predicted her own death? You know, she was obviously crying out for help because it was just a, a head that was portrayed in this piece of art that showed, um, and the, the hair, the, shoulder, the, the hair came down to her shoulder, which um, was how her hair was, you know, crying. On one side, there's a dog with a leash around his neck, you know. Um, the stick figure has no face, and it was obviously faceless. There's no body on, and there's no fingers on the um, stick figure, so, um, but there's a genitalia that was shown slightly on the stick figure, which studies have shown that children of abuse, when they do drawings, will show genitalia um, in their artwork. Madre said after meeting with Nisa's maternal grandparents, she was able to gather that Nisa was like any regular teenager, but things changed when her father died. Meanwhile, Kadva said while both Nisa's mother, Bibi Sharima Gopal, and her stepfather, Jarvis Small, are both defendants in the murder, they believe that both of them should face separate trials. With some legal background that I have, I would, and criminal cases that I've worked on, um, I would have preferred to have seen the um, defendants' um, cases severed and tried separately, so this way Sharima Gopal would be looked at independently. I'm not saying that she's not guilty, but like I said, my, my clinical um, impression of this is that Ms. Bibi Shurima Gopal is guilty of neglect. You know, so if there's a crime that she's co committed, she's guilty of neglect. Unless more evidence is produced to say that Shurima Gopal killed her daughter, I can't agree with what I've read or what I've seen. Bibi Gopal and Small were both formally committed to stand trial at the High Court for the murder of Gopal's teenage daughter by Acting Chief Magistrate Priya Sunarine Bihari on August 10 at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. The two accused were jointly charged on October 8 of 2010 for the murder of the teenager. The victim's passport and a bank card were found with the remains. The gruesome find was made around noon by a family that had gone to the abandoned resort to swim in the Madawini Creek. Reporting for TVG News, I'm Samuel Subnandan.